Thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Tren Lee and I am with, I'm an organizer with the Center on Policy Initiative, CPI. Uh, we have been around for 15 years. We are a research and action center that advocates for working families in San Diego. And a lot of us, a lot of folks know about the living wage or, uh, campaign that we did back in 2005. Uh, we also recently passed a property value protection ordinance uh, this last year where it fines banks for if they don't maintain their foreclosed properties. So we do a lot of policy work um, and right now we are spending a lot of um, energy and time working on the city budget campaign. We are working closely with the Community Budget Alliance. It has been around for over a year now. It started up last January 2012 and um, it basically came from a conversation with folks um, who were advocating for projects they care about and the answer was always we don't have money right um, but as we found out the city budget is 2.3 billion dollars every year and so where does that money go and that's when we realized that we have to be a part of this process and understanding where that money is allocated and making sure that our voices are heard um, and that projects that folks that we work with uh, get funded. So before we get started, can we do a quick poll um, just to see, get a sense of the room, see who um, participated in the Budget 101 last year, or I'm sorry, last night? If you could just click yes or no, that would be great. Great, so it looks like 75% of folks in the room were a part of Budget 101 last night, so that's great. For, for the folks who did not join us last night, thank you for joining us today. Um, and we are going to go ahead and get started with Budget 102. Uh, just quickly, just to let you know that I may glance down at my notes every once in a while. Um, as we know, the budget's very complicated, and so I just want to make sure the information I'm presenting is accurate. So I hope folks don't mind. Um, budget 102, so we're going to focus more on infrastructure and infrastructure spending and um, how how funds, how CPA get, see the, how the capital improvement program gets its funding um, and how it's being spent and how folks can get involved in that process. So for folks who uh, were not a part of Budget 101 last night, we're just going to do a quick recap of Budget 101. So the budget is a series of tough decisions. Priorities are set by city staff, council members, and the mayor, um, all of which can be influenced by uh, residents. These decisions about where our money goes may make one neighborhood seem nicer than another. So we must be our own neighborhood advocates. There's not enough money. There's not enough revenue that comes into the city every year, and so the squeaky wheel tends to get the grease. So the more that you are able to advocate for your neighborhood, for your project, the more likely um, that it will get funded. The importance of neighborhood advocates. Armed with the right information, you can win projects for your community uninformed and your neighborhood risks losing valuable resources. And again, if the slide looks too small, you can click on the magnifying glass on the bottom left hand side of the slide. People often feel that the built environment and services in their neighborhoods are unchangeable. Um, what they don't uh, know is that what's around them is actually the outcome of multiple decisions over time. It's often a question of power and power can be seized. Yes, it's hard, but it's not impossible. And we want to highlight two uh, examples. Uh, one is Mid-City Can Youth Council. Uh, they have they started advocating for a skate park in City Heights and they came out to public budget hearings last year, a lot of times testifying for the first time. Um, and although they didn't get funding that year, they got a lot of attention and even a promise from Mayor Filner that they will get their funding eventually. Another example is San Diego Organizing Project. They've been advocating for sidewalks um, in Southeast San Diego and it's it took them so long that they did a press conference and brought attention, brought media attention to the issue and because of that they were able to get traction on their project. So 
Um, so it is very much possible to, to win projects in your neighborhood. So our city expenses, uh, real quickly, we talked about this last night, um, but as you can see, the general fund makes up uh, the most, um, the biggest pie, uh, and the general fund is what funds our core services uh, in the city. So that includes trash collection, fire services, police services, libraries, um, rec centers, um, that all comes up from the general fund. What we're what we're going to focus on today is the capital improvement funds, which is seven percent of of the total city budget. So, what is the capital improvement program? CIP. It's also known as CIP. It funds infrastructure in the community. So that includes um, streets, side street lights, sidewalks. Um, buildings in a community, public buildings, um, traffic signals, um, construction of a sewer, pump plant, that all comes from CIP. And so CIP funds the basic physical structures, systems, and facilities needed to provide services to residents and for the functioning of a community and its economy. Um, something to note is that CIP can fund a building, but it will not fund uh, the services out of a building. So for example, CIP can fund the building of a fire station or a police station, but it doesn't necessarily fund the services that the police station or, or a fire station provides, right? So it doesn't provide, um, CIP does not fund salaries or the equipment. Uh, same thing with libraries. The CIP can fund a building of a library, but in terms of the librarians and the books, that comes from the general fund. And CIP is something um, that a lot of residents have uh, a lot of concerns about because uh, a lot of a lot of our infrastructure in our communities are falling apart, right? And that affects our quality of life. That affects people's sense of safety in their neighborhoods, and that's why we are spending a lot of time and energy around understanding CIP. How does in infrastructure get planned? So there's the general plan, which provides a long-term vision and comprehensive policy framework for how the city should grow and develop. Um, it provides public services and maintains the qualities that define the city of San Diego. So the general plan does not um, does not go into the nitpicky stuff like um, changing land use designation or zonings on individual properties, um, but it provides a policy direction for future community plan updates, um, as well as discretionary project review and implementation programs. So examples of what the plan would focus on include land use and community planning, mobility, economic prosperity, public facility, services and safety, urban design, recreation, historic preservation, conservation, and noise. As for community plans and community planning groups, the community plans are, are smaller versions of the general plan. So they are more specific to each community. They, prov they, they provide the land use designations, assigned density ranges, and contain the detailed policies and guidelines at the community level. The city has 46 community plans, um, and the community plans also identify public facilities that are needed to serve the community and which are required to implement the general plan. The community planning groups make the decisions to carry out the community plan. They are the formal uh, mechanisms for community input in the land use decision-making process. Uh, yes. Uh, Eva asked if all the plans are available to the public. They should be available to the public. Um, and community planning groups are open to the public. Um, if you want to find the community planning group that covers your neighborhood or area, um, you can click on the link, the community planning group link, and it'll show you a list of community planning groups in the city of San Diego. 
Um, so community planning groups and the community plans have formal power recognized by the city so, and they are spaces where you can get active in advocating for your projects. You may even consider joining uh, your planning groups board as a, as a way to make sure that your projects are being prioritized and funded. Um, and then there is the infrastructure committee which just was recently formed this past year by Council President Todd Gloria. And um, the reason for its formation is we know there's a lot of kinks in the CAP process, and so they're, um, they're re-looking things and trying to make it better. Um, so the Infrastructure Committee's area of responsibility includes Capital Improvement Program, and the committee is expected to create a five-year program, conduct community hearings of priorities, um, and review and recommend revisions to any council policies dealing with CIP. So they are, uh, they are looking over the CIP process and trying to figure out how to make things better. So it, uh, it's a good opportunity to be a part of those uh, discussions at infrastructure committee hearings, which happens once a month. Okay. Um, so the infrastructure committee hearings happen at City Hall. Unfortunately, all of these meetings are at City Hall, um, and we as a Community Budget Alliance have been advocating for hearings in the community. So we're hoping that they will consider doing that, more of that in the future, but right now all the hearings are at City Hall. And uh, you can get a, a list of all the budget public hearings in May by clicking on that link. And we could, we're going to talk more about that. Uh, towards the, the end of the uh, webinar when we talk about the calendar. So let's move on to talk about the process. Um, there are, these are the different steps in which CIP projects get identified, prioritized, and then funded. Um, and then we're going to go into each step in detail. But first we're going to talk about what they are and who are the different entities that um, that participate in each step. So for identifying needed CIP projects, that includes the asset owning department divisions, city council, disability services, CIPRAC, so the senior level CIP officials, and community residents. So this is um, a key part in which community residents can play a role in the CIP process. And um, again, if, it, if the slide's too small, feel free to click on the magnifying glass. Um, the next step is identifying funding and prioritizing projects. And the mayor, city council, asset owning department divisions, financial management department, and de development services department all play a role in that step. After that, um, there's budgeting for the CIP. This, and we're currently budgeting for fiscal year 2014. So that actually starts this year, July 1st, 2013, and goes till June 30th, 2014. And so for the budgeting for the CIP, the mayor, city council, and financial management departments plays a role in that. And lastly, but not least, is the implementation of projects in the approved CIP budget. And that inc uh, includes city council, asset owning department and divisions, public works, engineering, and capital projects department, development services department, and the controller's office. And it's important to note that this uh, step requires ongoing monitoring. Um, CIP projects are often large and expensive and therefore take many years to uh, implement and complete. And so uh, you can actually go on the website. Uh, the City of San Diego has a website for you to track CIP projects in your neighborhood, particularly by district. So how are capital improvement projects identified? So there's lots of different ways. Um, one includes policy and direction from the mayor and city council. Um, another is legal requirements or mandates. So if a building is not earthquake safe, they may, that might take priority over a sidewalk. Um, long and mid-range mid plans, so that includes the general and community plans. Uh, unfunded needs lists. Uh, conditions assessments and asset management systems, uh, city staff assessments based on repair and maintenance records, observations and experience, uh, city council priorities and requests, and they, they 
ten, they send in their priorities in February. And then public input uh, through uh, talking to city council members, um, through uh, talking and being involved with planning and advisory committees, and also testifying at budget hearings. So next we're going to talk about identifying funds for CIP. Um, to fund CIP projects, um, financing plans generally rely on either DIFFs or FBAs. So DIFF stands for Development Impact Fee, and FBA stands for Facilities Benefit Assessment. Um, DIFFs are for communities that were already existing in the 1980s, and Facilities Benefit Assessments, or FBAs, um, are for newer communities that were mostly uh, greenfields uh, back, back in the 1980s. So for example, Logan or City Heights will be funded by a uh, development impact fee or DIF. Um, there are older neighborhoods and generators have grown up there, whereas Carmel Valley would be funded by a facilities benefit assessment, uh, which went from a greenfield to a fully developed community. So how does this funding work? Um, every piece of infrastructure, uh, library, park, street light, has a cost per parcel. So for every home, dwelling unit, or commercial space, the city calculates the amount of libraries, parking spaces, and other resources we need to serve that community. Every developer gets charged a diff fee to meet the needs um, of the community resources. For example, say you want to tear down old car dealership in City Heights. When a developer builds something um, new, a diff fee would, would go to the neighborhood to fund a new library, a new park, a new rec center, etc. Um, it's like money going to tiny bank accounts for each project. Uh, in, in older neighborhoods, this is a small amount of money because there's less development going on. Um, so it takes longer to fill up the piggy bank for each project that's funded by DIFF. You have a question. Hold on, Trin. Um, Sam asks, is the parcel map available online for public to view? Um, that is a good question. Uh, my understanding is that the parcels are actually not up to date in terms of how much they cost per parcel. Um, so that's another issue, right, is that uh, diff fees um, are maybe less than what they actually should be. Um, but in terms of the parcel map, we can look into that and get back to you. If you can send us your email address, um, we can send that to you hopefully tomorrow. That's a good question. <clears throat> so when you're talking about an area that's going to be built at the same time, um, such as Carmel Valley, it's developed over a much shorter period of time, maybe five years. Um, in those cases, the developer builds all the resources instead of paying the city to build them. So for example, a developer wants to build 500 homes in Carmel Valley. Um, they would then have to pay a facilities benefit assessment that would add up to a new library. Um, and so they build the streets, the library, the rec center, etc., and then the developer hands the resource over to the city um, for maintenance. Once it's turned over to the city, um, the maintenance for all these resources goes, uh, comes from the general fund. Uh, and because we do not have enough money, for maintenance and repairs for all of our resources, these projects become deferred maintenance and it's a matter of time before they start looking like the older parts of town. And so DIFF and, and FBAs kind of um, tells the story of older neighborhoods and newer neighborhoods in the sense that in older neighborhoods, people are there and then things get built and in newer neighborhoods, things get built and then people go there. CIP for fiscal year 2014. For folks who participated in the webinar last night, as you know, the budgeting process doesn't start until February. For CIP, it starts much, much earlier. It actually starts in August uh, to September uh, when education and outreach to the public happens uh, via the CPC, which is the Community Planners Committee. So the CPC is made up uh, every community planning group sends a representative to the CPC, and so the CPC is made up of representatives from each community planning group in the city. Um, from October to November, community planning groups develop requests for CEP projects 
come up with their priority list and then submit it. Uh, from November to January, the, uh, a task force then looks over proposals, um, conf uh, confirms funds, and also uh, does revisions and review. From January to March, the financial management uh, department works with asset owning departments and prepares a proposed budget with the mayor. April 15th, which is just two days ago, um, was when the mayor releases the proposed budget to the public. And that kicks off um, a host of public hearings, which happen from May 6th to the 10th. They're actually doing a special um, hearing on May 1st uh, for CIP. So there's actually going to be two hearings for CIP this year, one's on May 1st and one's on May 10th. And you can see that um, in the uh, schedule of public hearings, which we can share with you the link. It shows um, anything and everything that's in uh, the budget, there will be a hearing. So everything from libraries to parks and recs to code compliance to housing authority to CAP, um, there will be a hearing for it. Unfortunately, all the hearings are in the daytime. And so uh, the Community Budget Alliance advocated for an evening hearing for folks, uh, for residents who work in the daytime. And so they gave us an evening hearing May 22nd. Um, and more, for more information on the evening hearing, you can click on the link. Um, but it's going to be from 6 to 8, May 22nd, which is a Wednesday, at City Hall. Um, and so once all those public hearings um, happen, the mayor then takes the testimonies and public input into account and then issues a mayor revised mid-May. Um, and then after that, in June, City Council reviews <clears throat> final changes and approves the budget. And then July 1st is when the new fiscal year begins. So what happens um, now that your CP project uh, is prioritized and has been funded, what happens next? Uh, so then there's the implementation and monitoring process, uh, which has multiple steps on, it, um, on its own. Uh, and the engineering and capital projects department is primarily responsible for the implementation implementation and management of approved projects from the CIP budget. Um, capital improvement projects, again, are large and expensive and may take multiple years to complete. Um, and so the steps are project initi initiation, pre-planning, pre-design, design, construction bid and award, construction, and post-construction. And you can uh, check out the CIP website, which we gave the link earlier, to see which process, um, to see where your uh, CIP project is. And there's even contact information so that you can follow up with the city staffer on, on where your where that project is at. So how do I make my project a priority? Um, so it's very important to. Uh, do an assessment of your neighborhood and community and see what's needed and identify what those potential CIP projects are. Um, then you would want to get on the priority list. There, The City Council sends in their priority list in February, um, so it's good to have conversations with them. And also, there's a uh, community planning groups send in their priority list in November, so it's good to also participate in, in community planning groups. Uh, then you petition for funding, continue to advocate through um, having conversations with your city council member, with the mayor, um, with uh, community planning groups, and just con just make sure that folks know uh, what your what your project is and why it's important to you in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and once you get funding for it, it's important to nail down the implementation timeline. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to add your voice to the budget and to advocate for services and projects that you care about. Um, it's important to give input to community planning groups. Um, and we can share with you the link of all the different community planning groups um, in the area. Contact your, your city council member and the mayor, um, again, through visits, emails, phone calls. Um, even through social media to follow up, Facebook, Twitter, 
um, attend budget hearings, right? So folks can uh, place a face to a project and see that it, it affects residents. And also, we want you all to consider joining the Community Budget Alliance through your local nonprofit organization. It doesn't have to be a 501c3. Um, we have organizations and groups of all different types and sizes, um, all because we're united under the goal of a more open and transparent and fair budget for all neighborhoods. CPI is here to support you. Um, and you can stay updated on the budget through joining our mailing list. Um, you can go to our website to join. Uh, our website's onlinecpi.org. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. We will be doing a lot of social media around budget as, um, as the budget process picks up in May. Um, and also, this is my contact information. If you have any questions or need any follow-up, feel free to contact me. Um, you can email me or call me. Um, what's a 51C3? So a 51C3 is a status for uh, organizations. Uh, that means you're uh, a not a nonprofit. So um, donations, for example, donations go to, goes to a 51C3 are tax deductible, right? So then you can get funding from foundations. You can get um, individual donors to uh, have taxes on. But that's what a 51C3 is. Um, and now we. In terms of next steps, uh, the Community Budget Alliance is planning to have a budget teach-in. It is happening May 4th, which is a Saturday, 9.30 to 12.30 at the Jacob Center. Um, and we hosted a How to Read a Budget workshop um, last month so that folks uh, are able to read the budget now that it's released. But for the May teach-in is to talk about what's actually in the budget. And so we're going to break it down. It's, it's hundreds of pages, so we're going to break it down for folks uh, to understand. And then um, in addition to that informational component, we're also going to have an advocacy training where um, we talk about how to speak most effectively about uh, the need for good city services um, improvements in your neighborhood. And so that's happening May 4th. Um, again, budget hearings happening May 6th to the 10th, um, and the CIP hearings happening May 1st, actually, and then the evening budget hearing is May 22nd. So those are all great opportunities for you to get involved with the city budget. Um, and we have some time for Q&A. Do folks have any other questions? Oh, I already answered her question, okay. but if other people need it. Yeah, I answered directly. Here we go. Other people need it. That's the link turn for CIP by district. Okay, so we just shared with you the link for CIP by district. Um, and if no one else have any other questions, um, we can go ahead. And, Did you want to do your poll? Uh, we can close. Um, can we do a really quick? A poll before we end. We just want to get a sense of how many folks in the room actually plan on coming out to a budget hearing. And we can definitely follow up with you all um, about upcoming events as well. Um, we have a few questions that came up while folks are answering that. Great, we have 100% yes, <laughs> which is great. and then you just had a question come in. Okay, so um, someone just asked, um, can you explain the difference between CIP and CBA? Um, so CIP is Capital Improvement Project. Um, if you're talking about CPI, CPI is the Center on Policy Initiatives. We are one organization out of multiple organizations that are part of CBA. So CBA is a larger entity that includes a lot of different organizations, and CIP is one of them. Um, and Eva asked, uh, can we have this link for viewing at home? So we do plan on editing these uh, these webinars and putting them on our website for future viewing for folks. Um, so I guess that's all the questions that we have. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, 
We look forward to seeing you at our budget teach-in and at the upcoming public hearings. And we hope you all have a great night. Thank you.